Amethyst Ashley had all the circumstances going in her direction as she coasted to a victory at Pixcliff, but now we'll see how she fares with the rest of the competition throughout the season. Heading to this hot, deserty track in Death Valley, California, we're going to see how the drivers navigate a very slick racetrack with a lot of elevation change. And Steven Willey has been off to a historically bad start to the season. We'll see if he can overcome his bad luck. Well, no surprise, it's a hot one out here in California. The track is slick. The track has very little grip, but the Elite Cup Series has to go on, which means 42 drivers are going to have to figure out how to navigate this course for 75 laps and see who's going to take home a victory today and who's going to put themselves further up in the standings. This is the Mirage 500 at Mirage Short Roval in Death Valley, California. Well, hello again, everybody. Colin Denton here, back with another round of the NFRN Elite Cup Series. We're on a bit of a streak with this series. We'll hit the Amateur Cup Series at Grand Detour in a couple weeks. Champions League will also race next week, but second of three races in a row for this 42-car field. And today, they're going to have a bit of a challenge. This is a very unique type of track. We don't see this anywhere else. Of course, it's a short, a short oval, but there's elevation changes everywhere. The turns are two completely separate things. There is a lot for these guys to take into consideration, see what these crews can strategize on. And it's going to be a very exciting one to watch. And of course, we got to see how the Australian driver, Stuart Graddon, is going to make his move today. He has the lead in the point standings by a mile, and he's going to start on the front row today. This is a big opportunity for that number 29 team to get ahead even further. But we're going to see if they're going to be able to capitalize on that. And of course, there's 41 other cars that want to beat him out and Several of them are looking for their first career victory. So this is going to be a very fun one to watch, and we're going to see who's going to take it home. Now this race is the first one after this horrifying accident at Pigscliff. Nick Smith head-on into a jutted-out angled wall. Goes for a flip as well after contact with Julio Caesar on the front stretch. Full speed, you can just see the impact that that car took. And an absolutely horrifying incident for the 18 car, as well as Caesar on board. Smith had a driver's side door hit to the outside wall as well, and Peranza hits him as he slides down the racetrack. Now Caesar drove his car back to pit lane. He got treated at the infield care center. He's doing just fine, but Nick Smith had to go to the he got out of his car as well, but was treated for minor concussion concussion symptoms. And it appears that he's all right. Doctors cleared him for this race. So we're glad to see that he's back at the track. And we'll see and make sure that he is okay as he executes here today at Mirage. And speaking of Mirage, let's take you through for a lap around the track. Now you'll see on our test car here, coming across the start-finish line, it's going to get really slidey into turn number one. The heat at this track makes it very slick. The grip is low. We'll go down into turn number two and then up the huge elevation hill on the back stretch before you come down the other side. And the groove widens out in turns three and four as it's a long sweeping turn before you get back to the smaller hill up at the start finish line. Drivers will make the decision if they want to stay in either second or third gear. Probably not going to see a lot of shifting, but that is of course up to uh, driver's preference. Now the part-timers did take a couple of laps around the track to qualify their way into this race. Chris Harley, your points leader, got out there first. And then a big move made by the 20 car of Kenny Knox at the cutoff position. Big slide into turn number one and gets to the rear quarter panel of Noah Kim. And as they get up the hill, Knox is going to be able to take the position. Chris Harley is going to win his way into the race. TJ Smith is going to make his debut today. Kenny Knox is going to be the cutoff position. Kim has ended up sliding into 8th place. And so a look at the drivers that are making their way into the show today. Chris Harley, TJ Smith, Dwayne Calloway, Donnie Moore, Eric Van Arsdale, and Kenny Knox. 
rest of these drivers are going to have to pack it up and head to Riki Raceway. We'll be in Canada next week, and that's going to be their next opportunity to drive a car. But for right now, let's take you down trackside and get the starting command for today's race. All right, race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. And here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshal, star of the Hulu series, The Path, and Fox series, Prison Break, Ruckman Dunbar. For God and country, drivers, start your engines! And as the engines spark to life, we'll take you through the starting grid to see where these drivers will line up for this duel in the desert. Reese Butcher in the number 90 Chevrolet will be on the pole for today's race. His last win actually came in race number four of 2016. Stuart Gradden, who currently leads the point standings by a wide margin, will be on the outside pole. Philip Fry, who's trying to recover from two finishes outside the top 30 in the last two races, he'll be on place number three. And Kenny Knox, who missed Pigscliff, will be in place number four. Dwayne Calloway, currently second place in the Amateur Cup Series standings, will round out the top five. Adam Mundinger, who debuted the season in fifth place, has gone downhill since then and looking to see what he can do today in place number six. Cody Hagen has a best finish of 15th place this season, starting on place seven. And Caleb Campbell, the Thunderhawk Motorsports driver, starts in place number eight. Dale Jr. Fan 88-83 has improved every race so far. He'll start in place number nine. And the Pikes Peak runner-up, Jet Kraus, rounding out the top 10. It's been a while since Nick Smith's earned a win, but he'll start in place number 11, looking for it today. NASCAR Fan 19, the first of the Ramco Motorsport drivers, starts in place number 12. And of course, in the spot behind him is Rampage in the number one Ford. He'll be in place number 13. William Brock, still yet to lead a lap in this series, is starting in place 14. Tyler Markell is off to a terrible start in the standings, 36th place as it stands, but today he starts in place number 15. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. grabbed his best career finish of 14th place at Pig's Cliff, and he'll start in place number 16 today. Rambo has yet to finish in the top 30, and he'll see if he can change that by starting in place number 17 today. And Jake Baskinger is looking to get out of the land of mediocrity as he starts in place number 18. Two spots behind Baskinger in 21st in standings is Ryan Maiden, who will start 19th. And Bruno De Barros is coming off of back-to-back -to -back top 10s, and he'll round out the top 20 here today. As we go through the rest of the starting order, we've got a bit of an interesting start to this race. Now, you'll notice that the cars are parked down in turns 3 and 4. Normally, they'd be on pit road and pacing the start off and get their tires fresh, but not at this track. At Mirage, they're going to do a... A stopped start, if that makes any sense. They're going to basically just take off as soon as the green flag flies. So the pace car is going to get it out of the way. And then as soon as the cars start to roll off, they're going to turn them loose. And obviously a little bit different than the rest of the tracks on the schedule. But they're doing it a little bit different here in the desert at Mirage. And we'll see how it turns out. The guys in the back might not like it, but I think the guys in the front will. So as the starting grid goes away, the pace car pulls off. Butcher, Gradden are pulling. They're starting to crawl. And the green flag has gone out, and we are officially going. We're racing here at Mirage. I would say that Reese Butcher was definitely the beneficiary of that stalled start. He took off like a rocket, and now we got Philip Fry on the inside of Stuart Gradden looking for position. And we're actually getting reports there is actually a car on pit road. That is Donnie Moore, the first race winner of the Amateur Cup Series season. And it looks, it appears as we're hearing, he made a cut to the inside too early. As we're watching it right now, yep. He's going to the inside of Johnny Gardner, and you can't beat the car in front of you on the inside to the line, and he obviously did that. So he got booked. He had to do a stop and go, and now he's back out on the racetrack. We just see Reese Butcher 
out in front. And we talked about before in the starting grid, Andrew Golden had the lead with just three laps to go, and Reese Butcher was able to pass him as Golden had to come down and get uh, fuel. A lot of cars did as well, and that propelled Butcher to his first and so far only victory in the NFR and Elite Cup Series, and that was just 26 races ago. Race number four of the 2016 season was when he last grabbed a victory, and now he's seeing if he can do it again here today in the race number four of the 2017 season. Stuart Graden has just been on a roll this entire season. He is currently first in the standings, 19 points ahead of second place. And now he's in fifth place among the drivers here today. He's dropped three spots after starting in second, but obviously he just needs to keep it clean. He has a he basically has his spot locked in. Obviously the win is a playoff berth, but he has little reason to think that he might drop to the below 25th place in standings. Amethyst Ashley is on the other end of the luck. Last week's winner is at the back of the field. And he's and she's racing with the other JR and Brad Stover basically for last place. Dwayne Calloway has been a force. In this, in this series, and he's not even a full timer in it, but he's made every race but one, which was Columbia. And obviously, there were a lot of competitors there that had an opportunity to get in, and he just couldn't do it. But he's running up there in second place. Chris Harley, the Amateur Cup Series winner from last week. Of course, he also DNQ'd from the Elite Cup Series race at the same track, which was his home state. And that was a bit disappointing, but of course he got into Donnie Moore twice, putting Moore into the inside wall, knocking him out of contention to qualify for Pigscliff, and in turn that ended up putting his number two car out as well. He did qualify for this one, Donnie Moore did as well. Hopefully we won't see any retribution as a result of that accident that occurred. As Moore didn't exactly get his force fair say, and look at this, they're three wide, possibly even going four wide over the big hill in the back stretch. We noted Tyler Markell's struggles. One career top five out of 29 races. That top five came at Hula Hoop, the last race of the season, and he was the last driver among the season one drivers to get a top five. And as that <laughs> continues to flow into this season, continuing not to pull that off. He still had a decent season in standings last year. They just never translated to top fives, and now his first three races are not going that great, but he is up there in the top 15 spot to start off this race. Steven Willey, though, he's even further back in standings. 44th place, which is the last among the full-timers. Currently 22nd at, in this race, which, if he could just finish there, would be his best result of the season so far. It's hard to say that it isn't just a bunch of bad luck considering he wrecked out at Columbia. Also had a wreck at Pig's Cliff. Pike's Peak wasn't exactly a great day for him. Nick Smith, he didn't have a great day at Pig's Cliff either, but look where he is. He's at in 16th place. As we noted, he was potentially suffering from concussion-like symptoms, but the doctors have cleared him to continue competing. Concussion symptoms, definitely not something to take minor, but it appears that anything that he was suffering from went away, went away very quickly, and he was visiting doctors throughout the entire week. And anything that looked straight from the accident seemed to have gone away, and they'll obviously be reevaluating him throughout the season, but it looks like he's doing okay right now as we see battle between Mundinger and Philip Fry. That's for the fifth position. NASCAR Fan 19 is going to stick his nose in there and try to take sixth place away from Fry.
Well, as we are 13 going on 14 laps into this race, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back for more NFRN Elite Cup Series racing action at Mirage. Coca-Cola Racing Family is a competitive bunch, so when we started getting points, every time we drank a Coke on camera, it became a competition. Kevin, talk us through those last 50 laps. What was it that got the job done for you out there today? And when we heard the money would be donated to charity, well, we took it to the next level. It's really a spectacular display of lightning tonight, but no one is outside to see it. Back to you in the studio, Carol. All the major indices are up as we near the closing bell, and the S&P 500 is showing. Lobster, say hi to our viewers. Hello, everybody. Thank you. It was absolutely delightful working with you. Coming around turn two. Oh, the personal trainer or the other personal trainer. Next on Liquidate. And a dramatic finish. Yes, not only do they have to clear the cliffs. Seeking warmth, the Arctic seals surface to bask in the sun. The Coca-Cola Racing Family, doing our part to help those in need. We would like to remind everybody that All-Star Race voting is now open. Link in the description. You can vote in your favorite driver into the All-Star Race that isn't already locked in. It is one vote for everybody, and that will be lasting for one week. So get down there, vote for your favorite driver, and see if they can make the show in just a few weeks' time. We are back at lab number 18 of action here at Mirage. We're looking at a battle between Carranza and Noah Ponser. Carranza is one of our California drivers taking part in today's event. We actually have two of them. Kenny Knox would be the other. Carranza is actually from the Bay Area, so not exactly, not exactly the closest to Death Valley, California, but obviously when you race inside your state, you get a little bit of a uh, local touch to it and Carranza is not having a great day though he's currently running 32nd in the field while Kenny Knox is running third and that's a a big run for a driver that isn't a normal competitor in the series he had a great qualifying spot too he started in fourth place but both of these drivers coming from a California background there's a lot of short tracks around the area and I'm sure they get a lot of experience in that department so this is exactly the kind of thing that they look forward to, and even though this is a very unique type of short track, we're showing that they know how to navigate it very well. We're looking on the on the onboard of Reese Butcher. Now, Donnie Moore, who had to take that penalty for passing on the inside, he caught up to the back of the field, so now he's competing for position, but the problem is Butcher is caught, catching up as well, and Moore's having trouble to get around these guys. So basically, Moore's just on the tail end of the re lead lap, with Butcher coming in hot and trying to see if he can put some cars a lap down. And Butcher definitely caught up to him really quickly without the interference of anyone else in the field. He's just able to drive right by these guys that are having trouble getting speed through the corners as they race with each other. Donnie Moore's in his third Elite Cup Series start. Average finish of 29.5. I believe those are 29 and 30th place finishes, so he, he's very consistent. Now it's a matter of can he get any further up, but running in the back with Reese Butcher in his mirror is not going to be something that he can keep calm about. Look at Aiden Shepard, made a switch in sponsorship just two races into the season. Pepsi Max coming on board. And he's having a decent run in the standings, 10th place right now, but he definitely had a big drop after Pig's Cliff. Got involved in a little bit of action and didn't have a great finish. He's trying to recover from that. Just about reaching the third waypoint in this race, NASCAR Fan 19 runs in the sixth posi position. And he has just had a, a bad fall through the standings. He's got, he Started out the season in second place with the runner-up spot at Columbia. And in that time, up to now, he's dropped 15 spots in the standings. 
very poor for performances at Pikes Peak and Pigscliff. Pigscliff, I believe, was a result of an accident. Pikes Peak was just a bad run. Jonathan Rains really turned it around, though. The first two races, he averaged a 33rd place finish, but Pike, uh, Pigs Cliff turned an 8th place finish for him. And you'll remember that he was in a contention spot to win the entire thing. However, gas strategy put him and the guy in front of him, Dale Jr. fan 88-83, to the pits. Just a couple laps shy of stretching it all the way to the caution and checkered flag. Would have been a, a big season boost, but now they got to continue the race their way in. Dale Jr. Fan 88-83 has had a struggle with starting great and dropping back. And that gap was about 12, and that start did not include today's start. Those were the results of the first three races. But he's really struggling to, to finish races as well as he starts them. We've seen Reese Butcher has caught up to the back of the field. He's now putting cars a lap down, but Dwayne Calloway has taken advantage of the traffic, and he is starting to make his way up to Butcher. Butcher has led every lap so far this race. Now Calloway is trying to show some muscle. And he's just able to get through the corners a lot better than Butcher is because Butcher has the card was outside, which is currently Donnie Moore. He's holding him up and not letting him get the slide into the corner he wants. And now Callaway is about one car length back from Butcher. And watch this turn. This could be a crucial turn for Callaway. And he's right up there to his bumper. And you could just see how clean Callaway was able to take that turn without traffic in his way and the 93 still continues to struggle to make the move to finalize the pass for the lead but he's definitely up there Kenny Knox is catching up as well Stuart Gradden wants a piece of it as well but as these cars remain stuck in lap traffic it's giving the rest of the, of the field behind Butcher an opportunity Callaway right up there again Can he get down the hill and dive bomb into turn number three? It's not going to happen this time. I'm sensing that Butcher has a terrible time getting around Moore. And Moore's actually had that great run to get up to the lapped cars faster than Butcher. But he just can't keep him behind him. Callaway won at Pikes Peak. He has experience winning that shorter tracks. But Pikes Peak isn't exactly the shortest of tracks. It was a... About a mile long, just a touch over it. Now he's seeing what he can do to improve his short track game. And right behind a driver that won at a short track, he's seeing if he can do it himself, and now he's going to the inside. And he's got the advantage going into turn number two, and he clears them easily. Dwayne Callaway to the lead. And we might see Kenny Knox coming to the inside as well, and he does. In one lap, Reese Butcher leads the entire race up to this point and loses two spots in a row. So a big move made to the lead. Callaway is going to see what he can do and try to steal a win away in the League Cup Series as we head to commercial break. We'll be right back from here at Mirage. This is my true passion. Did you know Goodyear developed a NASCAR tire that helps grip the track in the rain? This technology also helps you hug the road in bad weather. Our NASCAR rain tires can expel about 15 gallons of water per second. That's 950 gallons a lap. What does 950 gallons look like? <laughs> that 
That's not right. It's funny, but it's not right. Goodyear has a science behind grip. You either get it or you don't. Goodyear gets it. That's why they've been making tires to face NASCAR's grueling demands for more than 60 years. And that's why they've got a tire that's right for you. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. As always, a reminder to our viewers, there's never a late time to sign up for the league. If you want a spot in the NFRN and don't have one already, NFRN Truck Series late signups are always open. Link in the description. Get yourself a truck and see if you can race your way into Twin Ring Motegi, which will be our third race of the season. Lap number 37, Dwayne Calloway leads Kenny Knox, Reese Butcher, still trying to get around Amethyst Ashley, who was our last week winner. But the fact that we got two Amateur Cup Series regulars up here leading an Elite Cup Series race is just astonishing. And it's just amazing the fact that we're gonna, we could possibly see one of these guys steal away a victory. That would be a sight to see and would be a huge implication to our playoff system. Brad Stover has a big spot in the standings. Now 39th place is not where he wants to run, but consecutive top five finishes. Fourth at Pikes Peak, second at Pigs Cliff. If he can gain spots in this race, he could put himself up there in the standings. And c consider this, if one of the guys in the front of the field right now wins the race, that's a guaranteed spot open in the playoffs. That would be an open spot, and that is only going to be determined by points. Stuart Graden was looking to get up front, and now Kenny Knox is looking for the lead. Knox has been in two races so far. He missed, he missed Pig's Cliff, but an average finish of 25 right now. Neither of the races he's been in has been particularly successful for him. Of course, Knox is a California driver, and it would be a sight to see if he can get himself into victory lane. Carranza continues to struggle as our full-timer in the field. He is still back there in the 30s, 33rd to be exact. And that's just been a struggle for guys that qualified so poorly. They're just having trouble shuffling around making the pass. Look at Eric Monaco. He finished last place uh, at Pig's Cliff, and that dropped him nine spots in the standings. Currently running 15th place. He's trying to see what he can do to make that ground up. And you remember, it wasn't even a bad accident for him. He just got a little crunched up because William Brock came in hot, took out Jonathan Reigns in the process, coming to pit road, and Eric Monaco was trying to go down there as well, and just a tiny crunch stuck Monaco in last place because they had to drop out of the race as Rayer was crunched in. So it was a shame for Monaco, but looking for recovery now. Here's our Season 1 champ, Rampage. Currently running 5th in the points, 12th place in the race. He's not having a bad day. Seems like the Southwest is a, a good spot for him in terms of performance. You were... You'll have to remember that both of his victories have come from this region. We see Phil Fry comes in for pit stops. He'll be our first. And he'll come in for four tires. And as we were saying, Rampage has victories, two of them. And they've come from southwestern tracks, which were Ontario and California. Just a little bit west of here. And also at Zen Joltis in New Mexico. So not surprising to see him have a good run here today. Now, Dale Jr. Fan8883 will come in. He's having a solid day so far. And I don't expect we'll see him much further back, if at all further back, when they come back out and the rest of the field pits as well. It's a clean four-tire stop for him. More cars coming in. We'll see Kenny Knox is going to relinquish second place. Stuart Graden will give up fourth. I 
think this would be the only stop we'll have to see these cars make, and we're already just about ha uh, two thirds of the way right through the race, and they're just making their first pit stops. Callaway comes in, and he gets a little contact from Nick Smith. The tiniest bit of contact on his front end. Smith was a car that he was basically going to put a lap down. And the 18 basically brake checked him. Coming to his stall and we'll see if he fixes any of that damage. And he goes away fast and they're not fixing that. So a touch of front end damage to the 93 car. Reese Butcher comes in and he, he uh, crossed the line to make it first place for him. Obviously Callaway and Knox came in before him. We'll see if he comes out that way. Oh, and he stalled. Reese Butcher stalls in his pit stall. The first one on pit road, and this is a disastrous stop for the 90 car. Dominant all race. Just gave up the lead about 15 laps ago, and now he can't get out of his stall. The engine is sputtering, and we got a car off on the racetrack. On the outside, that's Gerard Run. He scrapes the pit road wall. And he must be out of gas, or something like that. In fact, I believe he has a tire down. He just came across and is registered as the leader, and now the caution comes out. Butcher finally got it running, and he's passed up a run. But we do have a caution on the course. Oran just took the lead, but now he's he can't get up the hill. And I do believe I saw a tire was down. But this high elevation is really giving him a struggle. Not to mention, he might have ran, ran out of gas just because of how long he was stretching it. And now he's holding up the entire field trying to get by him. Oh boy, 91 car stalled at the top of the hill and look at the crowd that is trying to get around him. They don't know where he's trying to go. And that's really got to frustrate cars that are just trying to get around him and hope, hoping that the, the league doesn't put them down spots that they were rightly supposed to be, be on. Monaco just stopped and he can't get around anybody. As now a runs is basically like backing up. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know if he's trying to like keep himself from going down the hill. And he's just going to stick it at the top of the hill and park it on the park it on the side and his day might be done. As we see Gerard, uh, sorry, Kenny Knox, he's going to be registered as our leader it appears. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Aron comes across the start finish line and he just he he falls off the side of the racetrack. And hits the pit road wall. And as I said, I saw a tire down, so that I assume that has to be the problem that sent him in that direction to start with. Because it was just a bizarre place to run off the racetrack. Now we'll wa we'll watch his onboard and see what happens here. Watching that, he he obviously had to lose a tire there, but now the engine is just not going anywhere, which surely means he's run out of gas. And the way he's just running back and forth means he's trying to get it back in the tank. Well, that's going to bring out our first caution here at Mirage. We'll be right back with more NFR and League Cup Series racing action after this. Take a walk on the wild side. He said, hey, honey. Take a walk on the wild side. I had no idea what I was getting into when I agreed to drive the Aaron's Dream Machine. I mean, I knew Aaron's was a great company, how they help people get the things they need without needing credit at a guaranteed low price. Aaron's is just great. But working with Michael Waltrip? Seriously? I don't understand him at all. He's a mess. Unbelievably disorganized and extremely immature. Never serious. 
He's like the opposite of me. This is going to be a very long season. We're back at Mirage, and Gerardo Ron has not dropped out of the race. They towed him back. They got his car repaired, filled up with gas, tire fixed, but now we got a new incident here, and NASCAR Fan 19 is supposed to be running second place, but somehow he's gotten caught on the inside of the 99 to Ryan Maiden, who would be a lap down, and he can't get to his spot. Maiden's just not letting him do it. And I don't know if the sport's going to look at that and say that 64 has an advantage. We're going back to green flag. And we'll see what they say. And the 99 wasn't giving him much room, but the 64 also on the inside. That might have given him an advantage. Because we got a mess of cars in the middle here. Coming down the hillside and Markel is up to 8th place. That's a good run for him. Kenny Knox blew away the rest of the field. 64 on the inside. 64 in a bad spot. Obviously helped that. In. Oh, we got TJ Smith around on the front stretch. And that will bring out a caution. This is the debut race for TJ Smith. And he is the only Amateur Cup Series driver that is making a debut today. Everyone else has previous experience. Driving the 75 car. Oh, and another spin. Mitchell Mark. And that is just in front of the start finish line. That's going to be at the cost of a couple spots for him. Don't think he's going to be happy about that. But that will be our second caution of the day as TJ Smith got turned around first. First driver of Jones Smith Racing to make a start in the Elite Cup Series. I think Eric Monica was the initiator of this second incident involving Mark. Obviously, Monaco finished last place in the race at Pigs Cliff, and we noted that before, but don't know if frustration has got to him or if it might have just been a racing incident. And Monaco's just kind of tucking himself in between cars as they try to get back to file. Oh, jeez. TJ Smith up against the back of Jack Porkins. And now he's just rubbing his door. The drivers are basically locked into each other. Side by side. Now Smith's pushing him onto pit road and... Oh, and he just puts himself into the pit... to the end of pit road wall. And took out Porkins in the process. Porkins just goes away. But that's crazy. TJ Smith. A completely unnecessary run into the wall. As we watch what happens. And it looks like it's the, the 9 of Fitzwater gets into him. And that's what puts him in there. But Jack Porkins had nothing to do with that. He ran across right there. At the top of the screen. Had nothing to do with this accident. That's unbelievable. What just happened there. So it was a very minor spin, but suddenly whatever happened on the aftermath just seemed to have nothing to do with what what happened in the original spot. And we see right here, this is where Monaco gets in the mark, and yeah, I just don't know what to, to blame that on. But Mark is the one that gets spun out as a result and loses maybe four or five spots as a result. We're still trying to gather information about what happened with Smith and Porkins. So here's this is this is after the caution has been taken. So Smith's coming up here. Porkins at the back of the field. Oh, jeez, he just punted Porkins. Porkins was trying to find his place in line. He, he gives Porkins back end damage, and the 4 he just drove drove right by. He doesn't even conversate with the 75 car and now this is what we already saw live 75 car just goes the direction of the pits and bam straight into the end of pit road wall and he's going to be out of this one well this is a crazy scene here in death valley california second caution of the day 
we'll try to figure out what we do from here, but that's going to send us commercial break, and we'll be right back when we figure all of this out. NASCAR in the Winter Olympics on NBC. Hmm, maybe I should be in the Winter Olympics. NASCAR and the Winter Olympics on NBC. We return to Mirage for NFR and Elite Cup Series race in action. TJ Smith is out of the race. He put himself in the end of pit road wall and completely busted up the front of his car. So his debut is going to end in a last place finish. But we still have no idea why he got into the back of Porkins. As the rest of the field goes ahead and restarts on lap number 61. We got 15 laps to go here. NASCAR Fan 19 right on the bumper of Kenny Knox. Oh, and there's a spin in the back. That is the other JR. Up on the hill and there's no caution. Dale Jr. Fan 8083 was the car I saw hooked onto the 98. And the 76 car is running in fifth place and now he drops out of that leaderboard. I believe that accident probably had a say in it. We watch the replay and they're just getting really tangled up in there and 98 car just goes for a spin. 76 got in woman. That's pretty pretty big for the 98 car in terms of what he's trying to do and looks like Fitzwater got hit with a pass passing penalty I think. Oh cars in the grass. Eli Bright Van Orsdale and they're coming across. This is gonna be really bad. It's a slick track and in the baskinger goes Bright. And the caution comes out. The 88 in the grass. And there's more trouble. Four cars spinning out here in the back of the field. Jack Porkins is one of them. And he was obviously the guy that got hit by TJ Smith. And Aiden Shepard, another one of those. Can't tell if those two were related incidents. But they obviously happened in the, in the same part of the racetrack. As we hit our third caution of the day. Bruno De Barros had two top 10 finishes in a row coming into this race. And it looks like that streak's going to end here. As our caution flag flies once again. Coming in a uh, very short spurt. In the overall scheme of this race. Van Arsdale got into Philip Fry. And it looks like the 27 car was the one that rebounded. And Eli Bright was to his inside, and that's what put the 88 so far out there. 27 was lucky. He just slid into a gap. 88, not so lucky. As he gets into Jake Baskinger, who's desperately looking for a good finish, and so is Stephen Woolley, who's on his outside, but I don't think he got as much damage as the 84 car got. And that's all that the 88 car is going to suffer as he pulls away. Here's what happened on the other side, though, and it looks like Porkins is running up on the 12 car and gets him into the grass. Porkins got into the grass for a moment there, pulled it back on the racetrack, but then the 12 car is coming in into the corner of full speed, and it looks like that's just going to be a chain reaction crash there as Porkins will be the first one he hits, and Gardner and Shepard were the innocent victims of the entire thing. So a very quick yellow off the green flag, and we've had a couple of those so far. But we are getting ready to go back to green, and we are just a few short laps away. Seven, to be exact. Kenny Knox continues to lead the field. NASCAR Fan 19 in second place, and I don't believe we have third place until Callaway right there. Green flags out. And Noah Carr's to the inside of the 64 car. He cuts in there and gets side by side. Cars is not on the lead lap. And that is going to put a big dent in the lead 
that NASCAR Fan 19 was trying to close. And Kenny Knox rockets out, and he is your new leader. If anything, I gotta believe that was a strategy move by Cars. Reason being, if Knox wins this race, it's an open spot in the playoffs. If NASCAR Fan 19 wins it, he's guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. So the 44 car was trying to do everything he could to keep Ramco Motorsports out. And obviously, they're one of the top teams in this entire league. They got four combined wins, all coming from 2016. NASCAR Fan 18 continues to run second as Callaway is still a ways back. And there's Stephen Will. He had to come to pit road. It looks like we had some penalties handed out. And there are multiple cars on pit road. And I think those are all stemming from pit road, pen uh, sorry, restart penalties. And Fitzwater, that is his second. And he's being held. Gotta follow those rules. And now we got three wide as Nick Smith joins the conversation. And he can't get to the inside of the 64 car, but the driver is desperately trying to get up to Kenny Knox. Cars continues to run to his outside. And the 64 car cannot get the line he wants. Mitchell Mark now to the inside of Kenny Knox, but... The 20 car is nothing to fear right now as he's got a pretty decent gap over second place. And he is a California driver. Remember that. That would be a great run for Knox. But not only that, that would just be huge for the sake of you're completely changing the complexion of the playoffs. Two laps to go in this one. And Callaway is up on the bumper of the 64 car. Could it make it? Could you make it one and two with Amateur Cup Series drivers? Cody Hagen's nowhere in the picture, which means the 64 is basically just trying to fight off the 93. But they are far away from the 20 car of Kenny Knox right now. White flag in the air. Knox just has to keep it clean to the inside of the five car. And there's a spin in the back. Tyler Markell, who's having a great run so far. Julio Caesar, who won at Columbia. The caution flag is waving, but that doesn't matter. They're racing back to the line anyway. And Kenny Knox coming out of turn number four. The Amateur Cup Series regular is going to win here at Mirage. An absolutely huge race for a multitude of reasons, but Kenny Knox, a California driver, wins here in Death Valley and essentially opens up a spot in the Elite Cup Series playoffs. That is absolutely unbelievable, but he earned it. He raced his butt off this entire way. So as we look at the results... There is a multitude of firsts for Kenny Knox. First career victory. First victory in the NFR and Elite Cup Series. The first time a driver has spoiled a win in another series. And the first time Toyota's been in victory lane this season. That is huge for Kenny Knox winning in his home state. And Toyota makes up the top three spots in the results. And Philip Fry also in fifth. That's huge for them, who is, they've been really struggling in the manufacturer standings so far. So NASCAR Fan 19, Dwayne Callaway, great runs. And Callaway's obviously a Amateur Cup Series driver as well. Cody Hagen's going to be the fourth place driver. That was a big statement run for him. He needed to get up here. Stuart Radden continues his dominance with a sixth place run. Jack Krause, also another driver who had to make a big run. Adam Mundinger makes his way back into the top ten. Jonathan Reigns with another Top 10 run back to back, and John Arndt, who's been a veteran presence, finishes out the top 10. Further back in the field, and broiled in a bit of controversy, Eric Monaco finishes in 11th. Mitchell Mark actually finished on the lead lap, but obviously he was racing with Kenny Knox there at the end. He was the final car on the lead lap, and don't know if I could say that that penalty had anything to do with it, but it's 
still, Monaco has that little stain from spinning the five car out just before they got to the caution line. Dominic Carranza, the other California driver, was in the 30s for a good portion of the race. I believe up until that first caution period, he was back in the field, but still finishing on the lead lap, he'll take home a top 20. That's respectable. The late crash is going to put Julio Caesar and Tyler Markell in 22nd and 23rd, respectively. And Markell, that's just heartbreaking for him because he had to be in a great position before that last lap accident. And he obviously needs points to be made up. And now he's going to have to settle for a mid-pack place. Steven Willey continues to be unable to produce as he finishes a lap down in 37th place. Gerardo Ron finally got it towed back, but he ended up finishing two laps down. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. got bit by penalties off the restarts, got parked for a lap for having a second violation, and put him back in 39th place. Bruno De Barros, after being involved in one of those accidents, three laps down, his streak of top 10 runs that had just begun is down to a close as he finishes 40th. And Donnie Moore just never seemed to recover from having the restart violation right off the start of the race. And TJ Smith obviously just crashed himself. As we look at the standings, now Stuart Gratton continues to dominate the standings, a full 34 points over John Arndt. Arndt is still winless this season and winless in the league overall, but he would be in the spot that is now open because Kenny Knox won the race today. That top spot in the standings for winless drivers is going to be crucial now and something we have to pay attention to. But 12 races left in the season, the regular season that is, it's definitely going to be a competitive spot. Arndt is probably not going to keep it the entire time. Mundinger is averaging out a couple of bad runs and putting himself back into the top five in standings. Now in fourth place, Rampage is up to fifth place, your reigning champion. Dominic Carranza took a poor running spot and made it respectable in the top 20. He'll now sit in sixth place in standings. Reese Butcher looked like he was able to do something and then a heartbreak on pit road when his engine stalled. He'll just have to settle for seventh place in standings right now. Jet Kraus and NASCAR Fan 19 among those still winless but in the top 10. Amethyst Ashley currently ninth after she didn't have a great run today. Now would you believe this? Dwayne Calloway all the way up to 13th place in the standings. Kenny Knox in 20th. Those are guys that have missed a race. And they're beating out guys full time. Just shows how good these guys are. They're, they ran 1-3 and three today. And they're in the top 20 in standings after missing at least a race this season. Unbelievable runs by these Amateur Cup Series regulars. Callaway has been having a great season. Knox is well as well. Just had some bad luck at Pigscliff after getting caught up in a wreck on the first two laps. Bruno De Barros took a huge hit with his 40th place run. I believe he was running up in the right near the top 10, but drops back to 21st now. And you can tell that the hits just keep coming for some of these guys. Both of the Gardner Racing teammates running outside the top 30 in points. Tyler Markell had a great run going until he wrecked on the last lap, and now he's still in 35th. Gerardo Run led a lap, gave him a bonus point, but without a good finish, that didn't really mean much to him. And you wouldn't hope to look at this page, but the fact that Stephen Woolley is back here, you gotta look at it, because he's a full-timer with all of these part-time guys running behind him in just a narrow gap. That just shows how poorly the season has been going for Stephen Woolley this year. And he has got to make his way up there because he was a playoff contender last year and showing absolutely nothing so far in the first four races. As we look at the team standings, Ramco Motorsports storms to the front, finishes of second and 13th will do that. RPT7 Motorsports remains in second, but obviously Stuart Gratton had a great day while Porkins and the other JR got caught up in some stuff today. Didn't give them as great runs, even though Porkins I believe, still finished in the, in the top 20. Callaway Brothers Racing is making their way through the field as well as Eagle Motorsport with just the single drivers that are racing their way in to these races and putting themselves in the contention spots. You've got to watch out for these guys because they're going to come up and storm their way into the front of the team standings. AMI Incorporated had the lead last week and poor performances by DeBarros and Ashley put them all the way down to fourth place. 
Now, Rookie of the Year standings, not much of a surprise to see Stuart Graden up top, but a little bit surprising to see Julio Caesar down in fourth place. Now, this is just a matter of the system when you get points for being the top 10 of rookies and also bonus points for being in the top 10 of the race overall mixed in with those veterans. Just how the system works that puts Jack Kraus up in second and Brad Stover in third. But yes, there is a big gap between Graden above the rest of the field considering he's finished in the top 10 every single race so far this season. And of course, as we get further back in the field, obviously a lot of these guys are just hoping for Graden to have a bad day. Of course, they want to get in the big point standings. That's their main goal. Get a win, get in the playoffs, but look at the year standings. They just need to see Graden have a bad day if they want any chance of get, getting up there. We still have five guys that have yet to get points in this standings other than attempting the race. Well, thank you to everybody who's tuned in for today's race at Mirage Short Roval. A gigantic win for Kenny Knox. Shakes up the entire playoff picture. Make sure to tune in next week when we head to Riki Raceway, another returning track, to see who will be the next one to claim their spot. This has been a presentation of Rainbow Vortex Network. We will see you all next time. Yeah.